Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Well, you'll want to listen because you just might learn something. But I dare you, where do you look at our next guest? He's got so many distracting things. Dr. Jamie Matthews is joining us now. He's an astrophysicist, associate professor at the Department of Astronomy at UBC. Jamie, complete that circuit. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's a what, an energy stick? <laughs> an energy stick. And you yeah. are literally, you I'm, are becoming part of the circuit. Yeah, I'm the human wire that's connecting the circuit. Can we kumbaya? Can yeah, we all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall we light her up? Should we spark this baby? <laughs> oh, wait, uh, uh, broken. Uh, yeah. ah, I like that. <laughs> okay, we are, uh, we've got so many things to discuss, but let's uh, discuss our little slideshow that we're doing today. What are we going to learn today, Jamie? All right, well, you know, last week in the news was the discovery of what might be the Higgs boson. Uh, is this and, what people are calling the God particle? Yeah, and, that is what's sometimes called the God particle. How much do you like that term? Well, I don't, and physicists hate the term. It was the title Why? of a book, and it probably sold books. Why? Well, basically, it, it, it maybe puts too much importance. The, the Higgs boson is fundamental to what we are and what the universe is, uh, but you know, associating it with God just... Yeah, doesn't doesn't yeah. work. Kind of blows doesn't that work. whole science yeah. stuff out of the <laughs> right. equation, doesn't it? Oh, okay, well. you, as usual, have been kind enough to put together a nice PowerPoint yeah. presentation for us and for our viewers first to uh, give us some, yeah. drop some knowledge, Sean. So, John. travel along, let's go to ground zero. And okay. so, what we're seeing uh, up on the screen now is ground zero for the search for the Higgs boson. Let's have a look. There, there we go. Is. CERN, the world's largest accelerator uh, near Geneva. And that's showing the outline of where this is. And it's basically a racetrack for particles, for protons and ions. It's 27 kilometers are in there circumference. Hurdles? There are no hurdles. <laughs> there you see part of the racetrack. Water uh, hazards? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, I called it ground zero. I should have called it underground zero because the racetrack's actually 100 meters underground. Is there a reason for it being underground? Well, just because if you're going to take up 27 kilometers, right. and, you know, going Easier through people's to do it property and farm, exactly. Right. Uh, and I called it a racetrack, but really I should call it a demolition derby for particles because this is the track in which particles, mainly protons and ions, are being smashed into each other. They're being accelerated up to speeds close to the speed of light, near 300,000 kilometers per second, not per hour, per second, wow. and smashing into each other. And, uh, and when you smash two cars into each other, you don't get a new model car. When you smash particles into each other at high enough energy, you can get a new model particle. Uh, uh, probing quark. Different from, are there regular quarks and... and uh, well, yeah, there, there's are a, there a whole... Are there quarks? <laughs> there are quarks and quarks. Oh, sorry, wrong network. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's all sorts of things in the particle zoo. And uh, first, what we're using to look for these things in the particle zoo is this Large Hadron Collider at CERN. And if we can take a look... The LHC. Here, the LHC. And here is just one of a half a dozen detectors. Wow. And you can see how big it is. Yeah, this is a really big project, and these are the things that are looking for uh, the Higgs boson as part of what's called the Large Hadron Collider. Now, the problem is, is when, before it was ever switched on, you didn't hear about physicists exploring the frontiers of the fundamental nature of the universe. You heard about mad scientists possibly destroying the universe. Yes. Well, you debunk yeah. that myth. Well, it was the front Just page. Just by of, being here. <laughs> was that the Vancouver Sun? Well, no, was that was the front page of the New York Times. Here's the front page of the Vancouver Sun the day before it was switched on. <laughs> Big Bang recreation probably won't destroy Earth. That's reassuring. Sounds possible. Probably won't destroy Earth. I uh, like the, uh, it's, what's his name <laughs> in the brain? <laughs> Pinky in the Pinky, brain. Pinky, there you what go. What are we going to do tonight? We're going to destroy the world with the Large Hadron Collider. destroy the world. Now, the Large Hadron Collider, the large, I think you kind of figured out. It's yeah. big. Yeah. Uh, collider, it's the demolition derby. Particles collide. Hadron. What in the hell is a hadron? That's a really good question. <laughs> well, it turns out a hadron is a particle made of quarks. And ah, Mike was just asking there. about quarks. It's a, a class of particle. Protons and neutrons, the things that are in the nuclei of the atoms and molecules in our bodies are examples of hadrons. Okay. And the Large Hadron Collider collides protons, which are examples of hadrons, hence Large Hadron Collider. And what that is being used to do is to find exotic particles like the Higgs boson. Okay. Uh, so why are we looking for these, these exotic particles? What is it going to prove at the end yeah. of the day? Well, the Higgs boson in particular, it's part of the standard theory of particle physics, which is kind of one of the instruction manuals. If you were able to go to Ikea and buy a super deluxe, all-included, build-your-own-universe kit, 
uh, you would need instructions, and the standard theory of particle physics is part of the instruction manual. And one of the parts that's a key to our understanding of the universe is the Higgs boson, and the Higgs boson is believed to be a particle that gives mass, the property of mass, to all of the particles. As we see here, here's a generous Higgs boson <laughs> wrapping up mass and giving it to a proton. <laughs> By the way, really you can, you can the buy these. You're the ever. This you is can? The, Come are, on. The, these are plush are stuff to the characters. <laughs> and you buy it from a company called Particle Zoo. We live in an era where you can buy like microbes and par you know, some yeah. atomic particles as plush toys. Like Star oh, Trek really never predicted. You never saw this in Star Trek. Everyone on the internet isn't <laughs> wow, there. Wow, that's great. But the question is, is like, how does a particle give another particle mass? And what I'm going to do is, rather than talking about the physics of particles, let's talk about the physics of parties. Something that I know you two know intimately, okay, yes. and many of our viewers do. Yes. Imagine there's a, a party, lots and lots of guests, packed room, and a celebrity walks into the room. <laughs> a real celebrity. <laughs> okay, a super celebrity. Hey. All right, here we go. And like all celebrities, I'm trying to get to the bar, which is at the far end of the room. <laughs> yeah. Funny, that's where I always run into you at parties. <laughs> Love <Exactly>. your metaphor. <laughs> exactly. Now, the problem is, is as I'm working my way to the bar, because I'm a celebrity, people are clustering around me. They want to talk to me. They want my autograph. And so I'm working my way through. And as I move forward, different groups of people are clustering around me, slowing me down. If the room was empty, I could walk across and I could be at the bar in seconds. But it's going to take me many minutes to get there. And really, what I've been given given by the other party guests is the property of inertia. Newton's first law, you know, an object at rest will stay at rest uh, yes. unless acted upon a force. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to put more force, more effort into working my way to get to the bar. And that's, in fact, the property, the observable property of mass. Now, in this analogy, wow. okay. I'm not the Higgs boson. I'm just a regular run-of-the-mill particle. The party guests are the field that's generated by the Higgs boson imparting to me the property of inertia, the property of mass. <laughs> and if things didn't have mass, okay, we wouldn't have weight, and it might sound like a dieter's dream, except that if nothing had mass, yeah. then none of us would be here. None of the laws of physics would work, stars wouldn't form, planets wouldn't form, People we wouldn't, wouldn't have form. evolved. Exactly. And so we're really going to the heart of the wow. nature of the universe and why we're here. And wow, if I'm not I, having an I? existential <laughs> crisis right now, and whoa! <laughs> and that, uh, what Somebody just open up, the fridge door and see if the lights on, for God's sake. Screen, <laughs> we can put it up on the screen again. This is the, the footprint uh, of the particle that is probably the Higgs boson. It, it, it looks like a duck, and it waddles like a duck, and it's going to take a little more analysis to confirm that it quacks like a duck. Uh, but probably after a few months of intense analysis of the data, uh, that'll give me an excuse to come back and say, yes, we really got it right, and we've, we found the Higgs boson, and it really does the things that in the IKEA Super Universe Instruction Manual it says it does. It says it does. And, and this, um, I, I guess like all physics, as you go along, Everything leads to the next thing, leads to the next thing. So this is by no stretch of the imagination an endpoint for physics, particle physics. I'm just distracted uh, by the fact that Jamie just took a drink yeah. out of a lens cap. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm so used to them now, I don't even care. I, I didn't even notice. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's just part of it. But this is, I mean, that's got to be part of the excitement is, is that this does lead to the next thing. This, this frees everybody up to, to continue research. Yeah, and, and it may have applications that we can't imagine. Think back, you know, 100 years ago or so when subatomic particles were first recognized, mm -hmm. the discovery of the electron, the discovery of the proton. Yeah. At the time, it seemed like esoteric physics that only geeky physicists would like, and yeah. they didn't even have the word geeky then. But if it weren't for that, none of us would be seeing us right now because we wouldn't have electronics, we wouldn't have yeah. television, radio, we wouldn't have all this telecommunications. If we found the particle that imparts the property of mass, of, of matter on which gravity can affect things, wow. imagine the applications, uh, you know, 50 or 100 years from now, you know, we could be talking about, you know, anti-gravity hovercraft. Does, or I was going to say, does this mean we're all finally going to get our hoverboards? <laughs> I hope so, because in Back to the Future, too, 2015 is when we yeah, were supposed we're to have close. a hoverboard. Uh, and so if, if we can really bump up the effort, confirm the Higgs boson within the year, then we got two years to turn that into a hoverboard. I think it's our million dollar idea, Jamie. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have you back in a couple don't months. Don't tell Michael about it. It's just between Dude, don't worry. I'm not paying attention to anything. I'm tripping balls over <laughs> here, man. I just barely wrapped my head around Thank it. you, Dr. Jamie. Whoa. Wow. That's how you end that interview. We're going to take it. a quick break.